And we're back here at 7.07 a.m. And uh, as promised, we have, we have constitutionalists in the house this morning. Now, here's a name that's kind of a household name in Lubbock. Isidro Gutierrez. Good morning, Isidro. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Matt, good morning to you guys. Charter member of the Constitutionalist. And then also in the house this morning is the Reverend Wes Brown, who's a, a just a member of the Constitutionalist. And today morning, is gentlemen. today's Constitution Day. This is the day supposedly the Constitution was signed. Correct. Well, uh, the thing is that folks understand that the birth of the nation was July fourth, seventeen seventy six. Right? right. When you ask somebody when was the United States born, that's what they'll give you. Yeah. But the birth of the nation was actually on September seventeenth. 1787, the day that the Constitution was was yeah. ratified. Exactly. And um, so what, what's this all about? You guys tell us what Constitution or, or what the Constitutionalists do. We try to educate is what uh, our main uh, deal is. We, we believe that many students no longer know what America stands for. They no longer understand what the Constitution actually stands for. And we feel there's a tearing down of uh, traditional history and civics education, and we want to educate. So let's uh, let's start with, for example, what's going on with our judicial system. Uh, you've got a lot of, um, let's say, uh, you get a Supreme Court justices all the time. Um, you have huge fights about what should be um, what should be more important. You've got what they call the strict constitutionalists, those that believe in the Constitution, and those that think that the Constitution is, I guess, a guideline or a, a living document that can that can be, uh, I don't know what, what uh, but, but they, they take it not sh- uh, strictly. Uh, what's the importance of the Constitution uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, our judicial system? Matt, that is a big problem that we have in our country today, the changing of our history, revisionism that we see coming from the courts. The original intent of the Supreme Court was to be the branch of government that had the least amount of power. Mm-hmm with the uh, power resting in the people, which is one of the, which is a great, uh, or the beautiful thing about the Constitution. The American people are the power holders in the country, co- followed by the states. Finally, the federal government, which is limited mm-hmm. by the Constitution. Out of, in the federal government, we have the three branches, and of the three, the Supreme Court is supposed to be the weakest. And because of where we've come, because of the revision of our history, because of the misinterpretation of the original intent of the founders, we now have uh, the problem that you've just described, and well, that is a change being made by the courts. Well, and we have a situation that through judicial review, which uh, goes back to the old Marbury versus Madison, you have it being overdone to the point that judicial review has led to legislation from the bench instead of leaving the legislative branch. And then we also have to admit that the legislative branch has has fumbled the ball as well because they have not taken up some things that they should take up, such as immigration or any other things like that. So uh, essentially the legislative branch has given the power to the judicial system by not taking care of business, and the judicial system has been more than happy to take that power. See, we have a system of checks and balances in our country. And that is where the, the Congress can overrule the Supreme Court. But what, has, what we have come to today, and one of the reasons we're here today is to educate folks about that, is that the original intent of the Constitution has been uh, usurped by a Congress that, re, that will not challenge Supreme Court decisions, such as the one about uh, uh, Justice Roberts ruling that Obamacare was actually a tax. That whole thing was, was legislation from the bench. Mm-hmm. The Supreme Court has absolutely no authority at all to, to make a law stating that Obamacare is a tax. And they did it, and they went unchallenged by the Congress. Mm-hmm. Precisely the problem that you described. Yeah, well, and um, the, other, the other issue that um, I see is that uh, the, the court system... Um, is able to block laws that have been legislated, um, and uh, even even to the point where, um, you, you know, following the laws that are actually on the books have become the right of the judici- judicial system to stop those laws from being enacted. 
Well, that is true. That has happened. Mm -hmm. But the only reason that that has, uh, has continued is because the Congress has failed to challenge the Supreme Court or overrule the rulings of the Supreme Court, which they have the constitutional power to do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I'll... Well, we, we also have a, one of the things that we do in the Constitutional Society is we want to, to have people honor the fact that the Constitution is a great document. Uh, I, I personally don't believe it's a living document. I believe it's a document that can be amended, but it is not a living document as such have said. But there's been an attack on the Constitution and saying things like that the Constitution is a, a slavery document and uh, it, it is not a slavery document. As a matter of fact, when you look at it, uh, the, the actual three-fifths compromise and the ac aspects of why the compromise was done, you can understand that. If you also look at other documents that were written and done in our early uh, history, uh, like the Northwest Ordinance, which was written by Thomas Jefferson and did not allow any slavery in the Northwest area. So those are things that... Uh, well, and, and as you said, the Constitution, the legislative branch and the, the executive branch both have the right to, uh, with as well as the states, to change the Constitution if something in the Constitution is not appropriate Correct. for the time. But they have not been able to do that because it, well, it does work. See, let's, that is... Let, Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and, and talk further with uh, talk further about the Constitution. I do want to remind you that our text lines are open this morning. If you've got a question of our constitutionalist here, uh, you feel free to text it to us at 806-680-2790 is the number. Back with more of Matt and Dave in the morning on KFYO after this. Okay. Are we on? All right, here we go. Um, we are back here on KFYO Mornings with uh, Matt and Dave, and uh, again talking with the Reverend Wes Brown and uh, Cedro Gutierrez with the uh, Constitution uh, Constitutionalist. And we have some textures this morning. One says, we still have the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. Let's use them. Well, well I would tend to agree. Um, <laughs> I'd especially agree on the Tenth Amendment because... Remind uh, us quickly what they are. Well, the, the Tenth Amendment is, is that everything that's not given to the federal government in the Constitution goes back to the states. And one of those areas is education. We shouldn't probably even have a Department of Education because education is a state issue. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And, con yeah. and education, start, Jimmy Carter in 1977. That's correct, yeah. Invented that. Out of right. the clear blue sky, the Department of Education and education started going downhill ever since. Well, I agree, and I think it's also what's uh, caused us to have revisionist history take place in our... Yeah, we have another texture that says, are you two strict constitutionalists or living documentarians or uh, documentists? Uh, well, well, I can it, tell you the answer to that. Yeah, you're, you're uh, the, anytime anybody uses the word original intent, which I've used several times this morning, that means it is not a living document. Okay, what I want to know, we're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, uh, w particularly with the Democrats right now, running uh, for president. And I see a lot of things that I question whether, or could, I mean, some of the claims that they're making, vote for me and I'll, I'm going to give everyone $1,000. Uh, vote for me and the first thing I'm going to do is take away your guns. Vote for me and the first thing I'm going to do is end fracking. It, can that even be, is that even in the Constitution? Are they capable of doing that? Well, what is in the Constitution is the Congress has the power of the purse. The House of Representatives has the power of the purse. Mm -hmm. Now, you saw in the uh, Justice Roberts ruling on Obamacare that he ruled that it was a tax. And so what he was affirming was that the, uh, the House of Representatives yeah. has the power to tax. Now, it was completely unconstitutional as far as we're concerned because all bills that have a uh, money attached to them have to originate in the House, and Obamacare originated in the Senate. And so it was completely unconstitutional, but that law is still on the books. Yeah. The Congress has failed to say that's unconstitutional and has, has allowed it to, to persist. So what we're doing here today is we're educating folks about the, ne the need to remain uh, with the uh, founding fathers on original intent. And, and Dave, to answer your question, yes, it can be done, but it can be done through, uh, you know, an executive order, and some executive orders are not necessarily constitutional. Yeah, and that can be, you know, decided by legislation, or can also be decided by uh, the courts as well. Well, 
Uh, and another question. Bernie Sanders, an avowed socialist, I mean, if, if socialism, uh, like he is wanting to do, is, is not constitutional, is it not? Well, it is if contrary. You just, if, if you just implement socialism, if he were elected president? Socialism is contrary to the Constitution as it is written, the original intent. Because the powers of the federal government are limited. That is the term federalism. It means limited government. That's essentially what it means. We are a republic. So we get to elect our representatives to go to Washington, D.C. and vote on our behalf. That is the meaning of the word republic. Right. That? And so... Bernie Sanders literally has no standing constitutionally based on his platform. However, there are people who are willing to vote for him. That, you know, you have to defend a person's right to, to vote. Uh, that, is, that is very much Americanism there, uh, that an True. individual person can vote any way they want. But the label democratic socialism is an oxymoron because you can't have democratic socialism. Because you no. can't, there is because, no they, such thing. because they do not work together. But the other aspect that the Cedro's already brought up is that when we have uh, our politicians that talk about that we live in a democracy, they are not telling the truth. We don't live in a democracy, yeah. we live in a republic, right? And a constitutional, a constitutional republic. republic is correct. Yeah. And, and in the constitutionalist society, things that we're fighting for, uh, you know, fighting are changing of our terminology like in the teaks in the public schools this next year they have put in it that we are a democratic republic that's not correct either they changed it from a constitutional republic so we're trying to work and talk to legislate yeah. uh, to our legislators and stuff like that that in the state level to change our teaks you know our educational standards back to what they should be instead of running away from them because we see more of of a situation that people are trying to be embarrassed about our history, and we want us to embrace our history, not be embarrassed about it. We want uh, uh, our students to be taught uh, that there are exceptional things that have taken place in America. We don't want them to ignore the bad things in our past, but we don't want them to just center on the bad things and forget the good right. things from our no, past. The, well, we, the Constitution allowed for those uh, bad things to be revised. That's correct. Mm. Uh, well, we have just a couple of minutes left, and I want to I want to allow you, I always like to allow our guest an open mic to uh, s make sure that you have covered everything that you want to talk about today. Well, I do want to say this, that as the Constitutionalist Society of Lubbock, we have been distributing pocket constitutions around Lubbock and Lub uh, Lubbock County and the surrounding counties for, well, for about 12 years now. We've uh, handed out about 85,000 so far, and we've been out to the schools, we've been out to social and civic clubs to speak about the, the beauty, the miracle, of the Constitution, and we're going to do that today at Texas Tech uh, University. We'll, we'll be out there talking to the students and telling them about the uh, miracle of the American Constitution. It's okay, the well, greatest me... place to live in the world, hands down, I think. How, how do you become a member of the Constitutionalist Society? Well, we meet the first and third uh, Mondays at the Egg and I. Uh, at this present time, we start about 11.45, and then you just show up and participate and and, and what does one of those meetings look like? Do you all just talk about the Constitution? We talk about history, as you mentioned, and we talk about uh, Supreme Court rulings and uh, uh, political campaigns, uh, presidential campaigns. Uh, so we, we discuss the need to, uh, to remain with our original intent as a founding. How, how do they get a hold of you? They can well, show up at the Agonite? <laughs> they can show up at the Egg and I, that's about right. You guys need a website. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we well, have Well, we website. do actually have a website. Uh, you can look uh, uh, us up, the Constitutionalist Society okay. of Lubbock. 